Again, welcome to all of you and all of you watching online as well. A grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you see it? <laughs> it's uh, one of these magic eye pictures, otherwise known as an auto stereogram. It's a 2D image, a uh, two-dimensional image that, with this repeating pattern. It looks all fuzzy, right? Which hides underneath it a, another three-dimensional image. So it's kind of like a, a picture within a picture, right? There, there's what is seen, and there's sort of what is unseen. Right? Some people can see it, actually, and some right, right away, many people can see it. I, I was kind of joking, though, this this week with the other pastors from our Divine Savior Church Association when we were doing our weekly Bible study and we were talking about these. And apparently none of us pastors were very good at seeing what's hidden in the background of these pictures. But apparently you can train your brain and it does something called stereosis where it kind of gets past its normal autofocus and you can see. So if you can't see it, that's, that's okay. They say it's easier if it's on the printed page and not the screen. But here's actually the image that's Hidden behind it. Did any of you see it? That's pretty cool, isn't it? There's a, there's a shark hidden in that picture. The unseen shark. Well, friends, what, what today God wants to do for us is to help us see the unseen. Of course, I'm not talking about just being able to see, like, the hidden shark in that picture, as cool as that was, right? I'm talking about being able to see by faith the eternal blessings of our salvation because of Jesus. I'm talking about being able to see the eternal glory of heaven, even though we still live here, right, two feet planted on this earth, firmly on the ground. I'm talking about being able to, to fix our eyes even on the unseen so that so that we, we, in a sense, even discover our purpose and joy in life no matter what we have to face and no matter what troubles we, ha we might go through. Because as we began to hear the Apostle Paul last week, remember he talked about if we can, if we can do this, we, we, can then, we can then live our lives in such a way that, that we don't lose heart. And even we're going to hear that the troubles that we experience, the, the pain that we feel will actually begin to become less and less heavy and more and more light. Right? For now, we live by faith. Until that day, with our Lord in glory, we will live by sight. So today we're going to pick up the last couple verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, which leads us into chapter 5. We, we pick up some of the same thoughts that Paul was sharing last time Here's what he says in chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So he sets up this contrast for us today. It's this comparison, this contrast here between uh, what is you know, outward or external and what is inward, what is internal. It's a contrast between what is, what is seen and what is unseen. The contrast between what is temporary and what is eternal. And it's a contrast, he says, that if you, if you see it can actually make our troubles in life seem light compared to the, the weight of glory. So maybe picture in your mind something like this, a scale, one of these balance scales, right? It's kind of like he's saying, you can, you can take all the troubles that you might have to face in this life before you die, and you can put them in one side of that scale, but in the other, you can put 
all that, that is bound up in knowing we have eternal life with the Lord in heaven. And what, what happens, it's not even close. The scale tips under the weight of glory. The weight of glory is beyond comparison. The weight of glory is wonderful. Because Jesus won the victory, he has secured for us in heaven a glory that will surpass even our wildest uh, hopes and dreams, our greatest imagination. And you heard it. Here's what Paul says. So, So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Years ago, my family and I went to a special church anniversary service out where my wife Sarah and her family grew up in far western Minnesota. So picture in your minds uh, an old stone, big country church out there in little house on the prairie kind of country. They were celebrating 125 years of, of, of an anniversary as a congregation, and so about 500 people or so were gathered there in this church to, to worship the Lord in the morning for, for church. And then throughout the afternoon, they had, they had time to, to tell stories, to reminisce. The choir was there to sing some of their favorite songs from the years. I remember it was a little bit into the afternoon when at that time one of our daughters hadn't yet had her afternoon nap. And, well, parents, you know how that goes sometimes. So I, I, took, I took our daughter outside in the fresh air. There was a tent outside. They had speakers set up. And the doors and the windows of the church were open. It was a beautiful afternoon, and you could hear the choir singing. I remember them singing a, a hymn, a hymn called God Be With You Till We Meet Again. And it was during the singing of that song that a lady walked out of the church walking quickly, this look on her face, and she walked right on over to the church cemetery where she stood in front of a tombstone. Whose was it? Was it her husband's? Was it a child's? One of her dear friends? I don't know. But I think I know what she was doing there. That despite how she was feeling, despite the seeming finality of being in a cemetery and looking at a piece of granite, she was, through eyes of faith, seeing the unseen. I I can imagine that she was thanking God for the memories of the blessings that he had poured out in her life and looking forward to this happy reunion in heaven because of faith in Jesus. I just can, I'll never forget it, her standing there as the choir's song is wafting out the windows into the air with the refrain, till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. The gospel of Jesus, the weight of glory. Friends, how do you face the troubles of this life? How do you deal with the the heartache, the struggle? The pain, sometimes the tragedy and the loss. You know, it's safe to say that all these experiences that we, that we go through are a result in a general way because we live in a world that's, that's groaning <laughs> under the curse of sin. This world is not as it was originally meant to be, is it? We feel it and we know it. This world, as beautiful as it still is, is not... It's not the way it was meant to be. But thankfully, it's not going to last either. Not like this, at least. Here's a Bible verse that says, For for this world in its present form is passing away. And so we, through the gospel, have a a brand new perspective on Christians. We are are future-oriented. We have this new perspective given to us by God. Our eyes now are opened. We fix them on the unseen. And this doesn't make us just like people who are like, well, I guess I'm just waiting around for heaven. Like we don't do anything or love anybody or do any good in the world like some people might think. But rather, (laughs) this, 
This gospel perspective is what it enables us in every moment of life, in every trial and tragedy that we face, to be able to have this almost stubborn optimism, this joyful confidence in the sure and certain promises of God. And that's why Paul is able to say, like, our, our light and momentary troubles. I mean, and if you read uh, the rest of the letter about Paul's troubles, or if you're familiar with his journeys, like, they weren't exactly light and momentary. That's not how I would describe getting stoned and left for dead and stuff like that. But he calls them light and momentary troubles that are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Do you see it? You know, somehow, some way, Paul is convinced that no matter what he has to go through, no matter how much it hurts, that God's going to use all that in his bigger picture, loving, providential perspective to, to keep him humble, to keep his faith alive, to keep him dependent on the Lord, and somehow, some way, use all that so that he'll make it home across the, the threshold into glory. So God helps him to see the unseen. And so by faith, we too, here's what he says again, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Do you see it, friends? God wants you to see it. Just imagine what would shift in your perspective in life. If you could daily fix your eyes, not on what is seen and what is now, but what is unseen. Teachers, what would you see? You would see that in your classroom, has, it's been a sanctified space where, where Jesus wants to welcome students through you, in whom he's placed a gospel treasure. You would see the Holy Spirit working to plant and grow and strengthen saving faith in kids' hearts, even equipping some of them to one day be ambassadors of the gospel all around the world. Parents, you would see angels guarding and protecting you throughout life, preventing you and your children from experiencing innumerable tragedies and calamities. And even if something should happen, God somehow to know that in his love can work that bad out for good. You would see it. Friends, just imagine how your perspective would shift if you daily fixed your eyes on the unseen. You would see every relationship that you have and every person that you meet, that God puts in front of you in life, as an opportunity to show love for someone for whom Christ died. Without giving a thought to their social status or the color of their skin, you'd love them. You'd see, friends, the, the celebration of the angels in heaven every time just one person, one more, comes to saving faith in Christ. Is it worth it? A hundred percent. Party time. You'd see that despite all the troubles in this world here in these end times, you'd see the words and promises of Jesus coming true, guaranteeing that one day he's going to come back to make all things new, just as he says. Yeah. Friends, you would, you would see your Savior right now, as he says, preparing a place for you, a home for you, a permanent place forever in heaven. I know some of you right now, you live in a, in a temporary, maybe feeling too small and cramped apartment, right? Or you're in a townhouse that maybe feels like it could use some work. Your landlord hasn't done any upgrades in a long time, and maybe you're not all that handy. And perhaps you, you worry even that one day you won't be able to even afford your own house. Well, that's okay. Because one day Jesus says, you're, you're going to have that home, that mansion prepared for you. And you know what? There's going to be nothing there that falls apart. You're going to ask for no upgrades that you wish you had that somebody else has. And there's going to be no mortgage payments to make. Friends, you'd see that despite 
whatever it is that you think you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. And no matter what you feel in your bones, no matter how you feel in your body, one day that by faith, you'll be glorified in your body and filled with energy to, to live your life fully to the glory of God the way you've always wanted to now. And finally, you would see that even though your loved ones may grow older, and despite the distance and the years, despite the sorrow and the grief of loss, there is a sure and certain hope of a blessed reunion for every believer in Jesus in heaven. And so by faith, as stubborn optimists, we, what do we do? We fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And friends, when we forget or fail to do so, we need only to remember that this is what our Savior Jesus did and never failed to do for us. It's what he did when he came to this earth as one of us to take upon himself the punishment that your sins and mine deserve. Jesus was able to see beyond the pain, beyond the suffering, to the eternal joy of having believers together with him in glory. It was seeing this yet unseen glory of having you with him in heaven, that he was willing to go to the cross, to accept and even to embrace your guilt, your shame, and to endure all the pain of the cross and everything that it took for him to win forgiveness for you. Full and free. And that, that is why we can persevere. We can persevere, as the Bible says, doing this. In the book of Hebrews, it says we can persevere, we can run the race, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What does that mean? That means Jesus, friends, he, he gave death a knockout blow when he rose from the dead. And now he lives at that place of power and prestige, the right hand of the Father in, in heavenly glory. And one day, one day he's coming back. He's, he's promised. By faith, he, though right now, actually shares all the eternal blessings that he won with those who trust in him by faith. He's actually guaranteed that to you by, by his spirit, whom he's placed in your hearts as a down payment. <laughs> he did that when, when you were baptized. And he made this, this commitment to you that he's never going to let you go. He's going to love you so much that no matter what you go through in life, he wants to use that to keep you close to him until he brings you safely home to heaven. And so day by day, Paul's saying, you know, our bodies, we were, were wasting away. But inwardly, through the gospel, the Spirit is working through God's word and sacraments to, to strengthen our faith, to renew us day by day. So finally, listen to hear what comes next. The, the heading here in the, in the NIV is called, it says, awaiting the new body. Okay, <laughs> awaiting the new body. Here's what Paul says in chapter 5. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent... We groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now, the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. For we live by faith, 
not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Ooh, right? So Paul sets up here another, another extended comparison. And it's really a comparison between our earthly body as it is now here on this earth and, and our heavenly glorified body. It's a, it's a comparison or a contrast here between what he calls this earthly tent we live in. Right? Our physical body now. What is this? This is my tent. My spirit lives in this tent. Right? And between what he calls a building from God or a, a heavenly dwelling. Okay? That's our glorified body then. Right, so this whole section, there's kind of this contrast between like life in a tent, temporary, and life in like a, like a concrete, hurricane-proof house. <laughs> Big, beautiful Florida house. Right? Kind, of, kind of that idea. Right? It's hard to even compare. Right? But as I read this section, I don't know about you, but I can't help but think about all the times my family's been out camping. I mean, for years, we just used to camp in a, in a tent. And uh, I can still remember I mean, there's these times where we're out there and, it, and there's a thunderstorm, like bad weather comes along. And I remember our tent would leak sometimes. Try sleeping when water's dripping on your face. I know now why they call that torture, right? It's not possible. I remember sometimes our, our tent would collapse in because a, a pole would snap. And then we're trying with a flashlight and duct tape in the middle of the night trying to get it to, to stand up again. I remember one time there was a, a hailstorm, and our coffee tent literally just got destroyed. It had metal poles. They snapped it. It ruined the whole thing, which was kind of a double bummer because that was, like, that, was, that was the coffee tent. That was the tent I would bring and set up so that all the adults in our camping trip could in the morning go in there and, and enjoy coffee and a devotion and conversation. <laughs> so. But Paul's kind of saying that's what life is like here on this earth, Right? But it's like life in this body, as we go throughout life, we, we kind of get weathered. <laughs> we get a little beaten up. We get creaky. We leak. Oh, like, holy cow, the whole thing. Like, the tent sometimes just comes crashing down. Paul says, for while we are in this tent, we groan and our burden. You can ask my wife about this later, but she would tell you that the last couple of weeks, and maybe it's been the last couple of months, I don't even know, so, so often, kind of from around the corner, some would say, what was that all about? Yeah. I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, that deep sigh, that, that groan, that, Ugh. what was that all about? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't do anything. She's like, no, you just groaned again. And then I've realized, like, I, I do that. And sometimes it's because I'm, I'm really, I'm exhausted after a long day. Or my muscles ache. Or my eyes are tired and strained from staring at a screen all day. Or my neck hurts because I'm hunched over a computer. Or I woke up funny, you know. But sometimes I groan because, because I'm going through a difficult situation. It's bothering me. Sometimes I groan because I'm worried about somebody. Sometimes I sigh because I'm really sad about something somebody shared with me and I'm carrying their burden. I'm taking it to the Lord in prayer, but it gets heavy sometimes. Right? Sometimes even the emotional weight of it all causes me to physically groan. I don't know why. Friends, what makes you groan? What causes you to sigh? Now, this weekend, of course, is, is Mother's Day, and it's a joyful thing to have an opportunity to honor moms and to, to thank the Lord for the gift of moms and the blessings that God gives us through moms, right? But in this world, it, it can also be a day that makes us groan. Whether it's distance or disappointment or feelings of loss or our own personal difficulties can sometimes cause us to sigh 
right? <laughs> like so many things in life, even a day meant to celebrate can stir up so many different feelings and, and longings at the same time, right? It's almost like this life isn't all that it was meant to be. It's almost like there's got to be something more, someplace where these longings of our hearts are finally and forever fulfilled, right? It's almost like our default setting has been programmed for heaven. So Paul says, what should, what should we do? We fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Because what then shall we see? We'll see things as God wants us to see them, that at the end of our lives, at the end of life, for every believer in Jesus Christ, there is a blessed hope of glory, a life more glorious than we could ever imagine. The gift of his grace. And to the extent that we experience things in this life that are bitter, things that cause us to feel sad, so much more sweet and joyful will heaven be in the presence of our Savior. And even if we should suffer loss here, right, the fulfillment of all God's promises will truly fill us up there. And so we live by faith. Right? That, that's, not, that's not a sign of weakness. <laughs> But in light of the gospel of Jesus, the reality of his resurrection and the track record of his faithfulness and the, the way that he keeps his promises, that's actually the wisest and best way to live. And then one day in a flash, we, we won't have to live by faith anymore. For we will see him as he is. As the Bible says, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. It's why I think so often in the Bible we are directed to set our sights on things above, to fix our eyes on the unseen, because it's the, the very real, the very true yet unseen home of heaven right? that God means to set our vision on. One more verse. Teachers, you heard this one just yesterday morning in the faculty devotion, but you're going to get part two here yet today. Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, he writes this. He says, but our citizenship is in heaven. I mean, we live in a great country here. We have freedoms. It's wonderful, but it's not our true and permanent home. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, check this out, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Wow. Remember, remember, friends, this picture I showed you at the beginning? Maybe you still can't see the shark. That's okay. I still can't either. I can send you a GIF and a link if you're interested. It actually shows it a little bit more clearly. But I don't know that I'll ever be somebody who's able to see these magic eye kind of, kind of pictures. But that's okay. <laughs> Maybe you won't either. But friends, don't miss today. Seeing by faith the eternal blessings that God has stored up for you through faith in Jesus Christ. So let's help each other fix our eyes on the promises of God. Let's help each other fix our eyes on Christ, who still to this day, through word and sacrament, renews us inwardly, even as outwardly we may be wasting away. And so let us help each other fix our eyes on Christ, who finally one day is coming back to raise us up and take us home to glory. So let's encourage each other to fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Thanks be to God. Amen.